What's up my friends? My name is Jake and I'm so glad you're here and ready to dive into some pretty fantastic stuff with me. On this last week of our series, Dive In, we're going to be exploring everything I love about the ocean. By far, the best thing is how God created all of the beautiful and exciting things about it. And I'm pumped to be exploring a few of those with you today. One way we can get all of our fins in motion is to play a game. And I've got a super fun one for you. It's called Follow the Pearl. First, you'll see a pearl, then we'll hide it inside one of our three clams, and they'll all start moving. So make sure to keep your eyes on that pearly prize. Those clams will shuffle around, and when they stop, you get to guess which clamshell the pearl is hiding in. This is gonna be so fun. So when you're ready, let's count down from three and say shuffle. Ready? Three, two, one, shuffle! That was fun. I think it's amazing that a beautiful pearl is formed inside of a clamshell. That's actually one of my favorite facts about God's incredible ocean creations. You see, a regular old piece of sand makes its way into the clam, and if it hangs out with the clam long enough, it changes and becomes a shiny pearl. You know, that actually makes me think of what it's like to follow Jesus. When you follow Jesus, over time, you will see him do amazing things in your life. And just like the clam will eventually open up and show the world that beautiful pearl, the best way to help others know Jesus is to open up and share those awesome things with them. Jesus really is the very best. And I want everyone to know about it. So let me hear you say this after me as loud as you can. Share Jesus. That's right, because this song we're about to sing is all about who Jesus is and all of the awesome things he does. And when we sing, we're sharing him with those around us. So let's do that together now.
Great singing. You can take a seat. <sighs> Fish. Foul. Foul. Oof. Foul. 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 Hmm. Foul. Fish. Ugh. Foul. Surf's up. Everybody get on your feet and let's ride some waves. Watch out because there are some crazy things coming our way. We'll need to jump or duck as we ride to make it safely to shore. Great job! You can take a seat. Hey you guys! You made it back to hang out and I'm so glad to see you. By now you've probably realized that I really love animals, especially the ones under the sea. And that's because I believe that God created each and every one of them uniquely and perfectly. Unfortunately, there are 1,800 animals each year that don't have what it takes to live in the ocean on their own and need a little bit of extra help. These animals are in need of a rescue. They all need help for a number of reasons. Some of those being that they can't find enough food or they were separated from their mothers too young or that they've gotten caught in ocean trash, which by the way is why it is super important that you never put your garbage in the ocean. Some of these animals are even sick and they need medicine. And since you won't find a whale practicing its veterinarian skills, these animals need someone to come to their aid. Everything from sea lions and dolphins to sea turtles and even seals can find themselves in a need of a little outside help. And while all this may sound really sad, you shouldn't be worried for these precious sea creatures because there are teams of volunteers all over the world that spend their time nursing these guys back to health. You see, sometimes these volunteers are going to do special dives to make sure everything looks okay, but other times people will call into the rescue centers to share what they've seen. And then faster than lightning, these first responders will rush in and do what they can. Once the rescuers have removed the animal from the unsafe environment, They'll give the treatment needed to get the animal feeling good as new and into a facility where they can spend their lives under close watch from marine doctors. Or in some cases, these animals will make such an incredible recovery that they'll be released back into their natural habitat in the deep blue. At each rescue center, there are passionate staff and volunteers who want to get the word out and let people know how they can help if they see a hurting sea friend. Somewhere along the way, those rescuers realized that they wanted to dedicate their lives to helping hurt animals, and they want others to join in too. In the same way Jesus rescued me from my sin and gave me a brand new life. Just like those rescuers are telling everyone they know to go take care of the ocean and its hurting animals, I have made it a point to tell everyone I know about Jesus. When Jesus rescues you, you have to share. Go tell everyone you know about the good things Jesus has done for you. Are you nervous? No need to sweat it. I can tell you firsthand that when you share Jesus, others will be rescued. Haven't decided to follow Jesus yet, but you think you're ready? Talk to someone you know and trust who follows Jesus too, like your parents or a leader around you. I've enjoyed sharing the good news of Jesus with you, and I hope that you will follow him and share this good news with others too. 
That was fascinating. Can you believe that there are so many animals in need of rescue out there? We learn something new every time Reed comes around. And hearing Reed talk about sharing Jesus made me think about a story from the Bible. Here, watch this. God's story, Peter preaches. So remember how part of God's story is about a guy named Peter who followed Jesus even though he messed up sometimes? Well, it goes like this. After Jesus died to rescue us, he came back to life. 40 days later, he rose into the sky, right up to heaven. Right before he left, he told his disciples, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and give you power. Then you will tell everyone about me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and everywhere in the world. After that, Peter and the others weren't sure what to do, so they waited together in Jerusalem. While they waited, a sound like wind came from heaven. They saw flames that looked like tongues land on their heads. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Other people who followed Jesus were waiting in Jerusalem too. And when they heard the sound, they all crowded together, even though they spoke lots of different languages and couldn't talk to each other. But the Holy Spirit gave Peter and the disciples power. Now they could show people how to follow Jesus. See, the Holy Spirit helps us do things we can't do by ourselves. That day, the disciples spoke, and everybody understood them. That's like if someone said something in Latin or Swahili, and we understood it. Seems impossible, but that's what happened. So Peter stood up and told everybody how the Holy Spirit had come, and that we can all follow Jesus. He said, turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. By the way, that means that when we believe in Jesus, we get the gift of the Holy Spirit too. Anyway, Peter told huge crowds of people about Jesus that day, and more than 3,000 people chose to follow him. Jesus had given Peter a job, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, Peter would do that job for the rest of his life. And that's part of the story of Peter. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Jesus died. He came back to life. He rose up to heaven. His followers had a job. They waited for the Holy Spirit. The Spirit came. Peter spoke. Everyone understood. People believed in Jesus. They got the Holy Spirit too. And that's a part of God's story. Wow! To think that Peter spent his entire life sharing Jesus with others? He had spent so much time being friends with Jesus and learning from him, it was like he couldn't help but share the good news of what Jesus had done with everyone. Okay, I want to see if you can remember some things we talked about today. So check this out. What did Peter share with the people in today's Bible story? A, we can all follow Jesus. B, Jesus wanted them to go swimming. C, they could fish on the shore. Or D, they could eat snow cones on the beach. Yes! Peter knew that following Jesus was the best decision anyone could make. So when the time came, Peter shared that good news with everyone he met. That's not all. Check out this next question. How can you share Jesus with others? A, swim with sharks. B, tell others about Jesus. C, show them how to follow Jesus. Or D, both B and C. Those are great ways that you can share Jesus with others. You guys, today's been so much fun, and I hope you'll come back next week. Before you go, let's pray together. Jesus, you are awesome. Please help us to share you with everyone you meet. Amen. It's been so fun hanging out with you guys these last few weeks, but the fun isn't over. Get on your feet. It's time to sing. This is love, this is life. Oh, 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 oh. that you came and you died. Oh, 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 took my place, now I'm saved. Oh, oh, oh. Now
great job. We had the best time diving into what God wanted to say to us today. You can take a seat.